Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about plying. Now, there can be quite a few uh, complicated plying structures you could use, but uh, I'm going to start off with the simple basic ones, which are the sort you would use most of the time anyway. That is, taking two or more singles spun in one direction and twisting them back on themselves in the opposite direction to get a yarn that looks something like this. So you will have your two bobbins of singles that you've spun ready to hand. Um, if you've bought the Lazy Kate then uh, you can assemble it simply by uh, screwing these upright into the base and putting your bobbins on with the uh, circular side, uh, circular raised side down. Now, these two bobbins I spun in the Z direction, which I can see by looking at this fibre, you can see, you may not be able to see, I can see there's a line there in that direction, which is the middle bar of the Z. So, uh, I know I always do that for 99% of my spinning, but it's good just to check. Uh, so I'll know I want to apply those together in the S direction. Now for a standard two ply yarn I want to keep the tension on both strands the same and uh, feed them at an even rate through my fingers to uh, the spinner. Now how much twist do I want? Well that will depend on how much twist I've got in here. Uh, well, you saw just now when I folded this uh, this twisted uh, piece in half, it put this much twist back in by itself. This is what we call a balanced yarn, where the uh, single twist and ply twist counteract each other, so the um, fibres themselves are running parallel to the length of the thread. For a lot of uh, knitting purposes, we will want a balanced yarn. Occasionally, if I want something that's extra strong and stretchy, for example for socks, I might put in a little bit extra plying twist uh, so make this yarn just a little bit more elastic. Um, I can't offhand think of any examples where I'd want too little plying twist but uh, there may be some. So to work out how much ply twist you're going to want in your singles you'll want to take a piece and make a ply back like this when the singles are fresh. This one here especially has been sitting on the bobbin for months. Uh, I can't even find the end now. I'll grab the end of this one. This one's been a few days so I can fold it in half and it will twist back on itself but uh, that twist has gone to sleep a little bit. Um, if you look closely at the uh, lines of the fibres uh, you will see that they're not running uh, parallel to the length. I actually want about that much ply twist in. So uh, rather than messing about trying to see your individual fibres, you're better off as soon as you uh, finish spinning, pulling off a quick bit, making a sample, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> pulling off a quick bit, making a sample and keeping your sample with your yarn so you'll know what a balanced yarn is when you're plying. You can then decide whether you actually want a balanced yarn or not. Right, let me just find the end of this, I don't know what's happened to it. Now you may have noticed I gave up on finding the end of that, uh, partly because it was difficult, partly because I realised I had this bobbin here that has uh, singles of a different colour on, so they will uh, contrast more nicely against uh, this grey, you'll be able to see my twist angle a bit more. So I get my spinner set up, I want the speed on zero, direction on S, tension higher than it was for the singles so uh, I will maybe have to up that if it's not taking on properly and my loop for my leader I will put those two through one two three times Let's just slide that through so it's straight okay the leader isn't quite tight on here. Okay. So 
So I'll go quite slowly to start off with. You see I'm holding these two strands in my left hand and feeding on a certain amount and trying to do it at a regular speed. Now I would, if I wasn't talking so much, have my speed up higher than this. Uh, as it is, I'm uh, doing it quite slowly so I'm watching for my angle of twist here to be about what my sample said it should be. Now some people with this back hand that's holding will separate their threads like this through their hand. I personally don't like doing this because you don't get quite the same tension and if for example that's got more tension than the other one this starts to wrap around, you don't get as even a yarn so uh, having these threads parallel to each other over my forefinger gently pinched with my thumb gives me the most even ply. Right, I'll turn it up a little bit so you can see the sort of speed I would be going and the rhythm I'd want to be doing. So I move an arm's length, arm's length, arm's length again I need a little, a little bit more speed. But I'm going to try and do this at as regular speed as I can manage to get the uh, ply twist as even as possible. Now, I remember as I said before, I don't normally work this close up to my wheel. If I had my bobbins right off, miles away to the left, and uh, I was as far away from the wheel as I could reach, then uh, both my singles twist that's still a little bit active in these bobbins and my plying twist would be able to even itself out over a longer area, so I would get it more even yarn. That is how I would generally work uh, if I wasn't filming. Right, let's get a little bit more twist in here so I can show you something. Now, if I want to be comparing this to my sample, I'll pretend this is my sample, um, I can quite easily look at this and go, yeah, the angle of twist, no, it's about that. Your spinner did actually come with a nifty little card here that you can uh, line up your yarn on here with... Uh, that lines up about with the 30 degree line, so I can say I've got uh, about 30 degrees of uh, twist in there. But uh, I generally don't measure that to a number, I will just eyeball it. Um, it's a useful thing to look at. So if you look at this yarn here, um, the white has got lumps and bumps in it. If I want to count my twists per inch, it's really close together. I've got maybe I've had 10 twists per inch up there, but down here where I've got slubs, my twist per inch varies and uh, that's probably only about two or three. But what does stay relatively consistent over this entire length is my angle of twist. So uh, if I've not got a perfectly even yarn, I don't need to worry. I can still get my plying uh, a happy balanced if I want uh, ply just by checking the angle. Now you can measure against this card if you want or uh, you can just eyeball it against your sample. You will notice if I let go of this it twists back on itself. Your immediate thought might be oh no that means it's over plied. It's not. As I said before the twist goes to sleep very quickly so the twist in these singles one of them's been here a couple of months the other one's a few days that has uh, deactivated sufficiently that this looks over plied even when it's not. Once I've wet finished this um, the twist will all reawaken as soon as it's in contact with the water and uh, these twists will balance each other out and I'll end up with the sort of yarn I was looking for. So uh, I'll keep going a little bit more. Okay, let's feed both on consistent speed. Now if I wanted to do fancy plying effects and you can play around with this you can you can intentionally change the tension on the different strands. Now uh, I find it easier to do this when they, they're separated. If I have one either side of me I can uh, 
hold on to one and let the other one wrap and get a sort of spirally ply, or hold on to that one and let that one wrap, or you can see uh, I get quite a different effect there and I've actually got far too much twist there so let's let some of that out. But, uh, you see I've got nice spirally bit up there so um, if you want to play with uneven plying do but uh, if you would like your plying to be even then I suggest you uh, keep your two singles next to each other in your hand rather than separating them where it's surprisingly easy to uh, accidentally uh, get the wrong tension now if you are incredibly lucky when you finish plying all of this, you will have no yarn left on either bobbin. I am very, very rarely that lucky. Almost always will you finish one bobbin before the other. Now, if you've only got a little bit left, it may not be worth doing anything with it. You can simply uh, use it to tie your skeins. But if you've got enough yarn left that you want to uh, be able to use it, um, in this plied yarn you, you've got a couple of options. Okay, so You might have seen people talking about winding a plying bracelet from this so you can access both ends of the yarn at, of your singles at once essentially folding it in half and plying this with itself. Well, You can uh, look on YouTube for videos of that, look for plying bracelet or some people call it Andean plying even though it's not how they ply in the Andes so try and use the correct terminology and call it a plying bracelet. But what I'm going to show you is uh, a uh, quicker way to do it that works because we have these lovely breakdown bobbins. Uh, I will find my end and uh, wind off half this yarn on a ball winder. I'm not going to wind off actually half of it, I'm just going to get to the end of the white I think. There we go. There. I have this ball here. Now I can take the end off my bobbin, put the bobbin into the ball winder and just slide that ball off and then uh, put the end back on my bobbin. Reassemble those so they sit next to each other. And now I once again have two balls of yarn that will unspool at the same time for me and uh, let me do my two ply yarn. If I didn't want to do a two ply yarn, if I wanted a three ply yarn for example, I could do exactly the same, just add an extra loads of cake module and an extra bobbin of singles, or a four or a five, and uh, I would treat them the same here, running them all parallel over my finger. The difference between a two and a three ply is fairly pronounced. A, uh, a two ply tends to be flatter um, it's it's more like a twisted ribbon, so you have uh, flatter areas as it twists, whereas a three ply is ra more rounded. So a two ply is great for lace or anything where your stitches need to interlock. A three ply is really good for things where you want uh, nice stitch definition like cables or moss stitch. Uh, a four ply is similar to three ply, again uh, a very rounded yarn and most hand spinners tend not to go above four although there's no reason not to other than uh, it takes a lot longer to spin the singles so if you do find yourself stuck in a rut and you're always consistently spinning the same size of singles and you can't break out of it you can still make lots of different thicknesses of yarn by uh, increasing your number of plies. Now another thing people often do if you've only got one bobbin uh, and you want to make the equivalent of a three ply yarn, you can chain ply, which is uh, like making a crochet chain. So you make a loop, pull another loop through, loop another loop through, like that. But you then add twist to it, 
and uh, you'll get a yarn that looks very much like a three ply yarn. There will be the odd bump in it where the chain is formed and the yarns change direction and there is debate as to whether it is more or less hard wearing so uh, you may or may not want to use it for something that gets a lot of wear like socks but uh, it's certainly a viable option and it's a very good option if you've spun a gradient or something we want to keep your colour changes clear if you spin two different colours together then uh, you will get a barber pole mild effect like this which you may or may not like whereas if you chain ply all the colours will come onto your plied bobbin the same order they come off your singles bobbin so I have done videos on how to do this before but I will show you again quickly now now this is one of the things where I like to have my set up very differently I move my bobbin off to my right and my e-spinner off to my left uh, I'm just going to treat this bit of plying here as if it's a leader and tie a knot in it and again ordinarily I would have far far more space between these two things so I've got enough space here that you can hopefully see what my hands are doing but uh, if I wasn't trying to film this I'd have a, a couple of metres in between probably both to let the twist even itself out and just so I've got room for my arms so I'm going to tie my singles onto my leader and then pull a loop through the leader you can see I have three strands here this one is a loop and that one is the strand that comes from the bobbin now the motion I'll be making is to make this loop grab that with my forefinger and pull it up I twist my hand make another loop and grab again and that is all I will be doing with my right hand at the same time my left hand controls the twist so uh, I'll be pinching off the twist until I've made my loop then I will slide my fingers down here to the next turning point and pinch again so uh, I can show you that while it's spinning oh, that's not taken up No idea why that's not taken up, it wasn't snagged on anything. Uh, I may have to fiddle with the head cup, I may not. Let's try it again. Alright, so that is working. I will turn the speed down a little bit so you can see better. So, there we go, I'm pinching off the twist at the start of that loop, reach my finger through and grab. While making this loop, I'm sliding my pinch along there, make another loop, slide, and slide. Wait for twist to build because I'm going quite slow. Grab the loop, slide. Grab the loop, slide. Wait for twist to build. And that's really all there is to it with chain plying. Uh, you see my yarn here, this looks a little bit over twisted. Let's let some of that twist into here. You can see my yarn here is uh, more rounded than my two ply and I do have a little bump here where I changed, uh, made the next uh, chain so if I had a break there that would be a catastrophic point of failure. My yarn would entirely disintegrate and make a hole from that point because uh, this is all a single strand, whereas if I did have a three ply, the three plies are independent of each other, so I'd get a less large hole. But it's uh, it's good for keeping colours together and uh, using up the last bit on a bobbin, so uh, it's a useful technique to have. Don't know if you noticed there, but I didn't. After I left ten let tension off, 
I had all sorts of little pigtaily things here which uh, I don't want in my plied yarn. So I'm constantly keeping tension between the orifice and this hand and then my two hands. There may be some pigtailing back here which I don't really care about because as I pull that comes out. If it's too much for you to handle then uh, get the piece of elastic that comes with your lazy kate and run it from one of these little um, little grips to the other side and past the bobbin whirl and that'll give you a bit more tension to uh, help control these singles a little bit better. And that's really all there is to it for plying. I mean, there is so much more to plying. I could uh, spin some single Z and some S and then ply them all together. Or I could do one plying pass Z, uh, S and then ply it back again Z. Uh, there are many things you can uh, research online or if you can afford to buy a book. Sarah Anderson's book, The Spinner's Book of Yarn Designs, is amazing. It covers so many different types of plying and fancy yarns and just pretty much everything. But uh, for the time being, stick to trying a two-ply, three-ply if you'd like to, and uh, then you can have a go with a chain-ply. And uh, I will be back with another video about consistency, and I will talk slightly more about ply twist then. But for the time being, just uh, try and get a yarn that you're happy with, not worry too much about uh, balance. And finally, everything I've said in this video has mostly been directed at knitters, as that is generally what uh, people will do with their um, electrical wheel spun yarn. I'm sure we've got a few weavers out there, and I am one myself. Weavers have different yarn needs, so we're far more likely to want a very highly twisted yarn, over plied, or an over twisted singles or um, any sorts of other unusual yarn structures that may not be as common with knitting. So uh, if you're a weaver then uh, hopefully you'll know more about the sort of yarn structures that you're interested in and you'll be able to replicate them by doing, for example, a far higher twist yarn than you would do if you were knitting. <laughs>